Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 278 of the Iron Coop Fights movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. Please check out my graphic novel, The Gold Lion and the Tournament of Sentinels. The ebook is only $2.99. Link in the description. I'm Kira, your host. With me on the show today, my co host, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews 300. In 480 BC, a state of war exists between Persia, led by King Xerxes, played by a Mexican guy, and Greece. At the Battle of Thermopylae, Leonidas, played by a Scottish guy, king of the Greek city-state of Sparta, leads his badly outnumbered warriors against the massive Persian army. Though certain death awaits the Spartans, their sacrifice inspires all of Greece to unite against their common enemy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to explain our rating system. (laughs) On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A (laughs) loss means we do not recommend the title. All right. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. So um, (laughs) I give this movie a win. I like this movie. However, every single time I do that, I'm like, ah, god damn it. Because there's so much controversy about how it's not historically accurate and it's based off a comic book and it's kind of racist potentially and uh, jingoist and imperialist. And What's jingoist? It's like militarist, like like really big on oh. like, we got to fight them. We, we got to wage it our is. wars. Yeah. Um, Clap them cheeks. And yeah yeah it's homoerotic it's got eye checks off all the boxes um however you know stylistically i think this is a really fun movie to watch and i always enjoy some showing this to someone who's never seen it before there was a time a couple years back when a friend of mine in a greek classics class had to watch this movie as like an example of greek stories in the film and uh she had no idea what it was but she know she knew i had seen it so i was like okay history though she knew the actual history of it, okay. yes, but she knew nothing about the movie. And then she was like, what the fuck is this? There's like heavy rock music playing as they yeah. like slay legions. Um, did, did, that... she, did you ever have to watch the 1962 movie? No, oh, we watched Tro- or for, for that class. She watched Troy and 300. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so um, – I think maybe Gladiator, but I didn't watch Gladiator. It's um, also not like. History. Are you not entertained? Well, that's the point. Is just to show these movies. Here's how the public media perception of them is. It's understood that they're not realistic. It's just that like this is what the mass media version yeah. is. Okay. Um, and so, but anyways, I think it's a very like interesting watch. I think that it stylistically is super cool. Um. And, you know, it's quote unquote badass or whatever. But, um, you know, it's I like am ashamed to give it a win (laughs) (laughs) on some very deep level. So, yeah. All right. Young Santa Claus, what do you think? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Young Santa Claus is going to give this a draw, believe it or not. I just realized he was wearing red. How long were you waiting to do that? (laughs) Just like five seconds ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give this a draw. Um, I'm sort of in the same boat as Emerson. I do like this movie. And I remember liking this movie a lot when I was younger. Like when I first watched it, I really enjoyed it, which is why I was so hyped to see it this week. But upon rewatching it now, I'm sort of, I'm sort of realizing all the holes it kind of has. Like, I don't know. Like the, I think the acting is really good and I think it's pretty entertaining the first few times you watch it, but the effects are pretty dated. Uh, and I think I got so? kinda, yeah, What's a little dated? bit. I think they hold up a lot of the backgrounds that they stand in front of are a little weird. I mean, the visuals are cool. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, like all the ships burning in the sea and, you know, some of like the creatures that they fight in the soul. Well, it feels like a fantasy land. Yeah, it feels like a fantasy land, but it, it, it sort of triggers the uncanny valley a little bit. Like the wolf at the very beginning does not look real and stuff like that. I like, guess I've accepted that it's like a magic wolf or something. Mm hmm. But I mean, I don't know. It's something that was pretty noticeable to me. Like, it didn't look very real, or at the very least, it looked pretty dated. And I, I, what I was about to say was, I, I was kind of bored watching it at some points, to be honest. Like, there's only so much like constant like chest pounding and warfare type stuff that I can take in a movie like this. And maybe my tastes have just changed, but. I used to like this a lot better. It's not terrible by any means. Like, Well, the, one of the reasons uh, I was hesitant to watch this was because I feel like you have to be in the right mindset. 
Maybe that's it. To really like appreciate the film. Because if you're not in the mood for that type of bravado, like it's it's a good thing to watch like before you have a wrestling match or something. It's not um it's not like it, it's oh, not something like while you're trying to like relax at night. This isn't something like yeah, to sit down with like a cup fit. of tea or something. Yeah. But um but in, on the positive side, like I said, I there's some visuals I really love. There's some things that they added in some of the combat scenes and I, I thought Emerson was going to bring this up in his review, but uh, th- there are so many iconic lines in this movie that have just been used to death nowadays. Like uh, Emerson, remember, uh, this is where we hold them. This is where we fight. This is where they die. I mean, I, I remember the line, but I feel like you're referencing something that I don't understand. No, it's just like every time we play for honor and every time we go up against a group of people, that's what you'd say. Oh, I don't remember saying that, but I believe you. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not a terrible <clears throat> movie, but I remember liking it a little bit better. So I'm going to give it a draw for now, but I'll we'll see, let's see if I change it by the end of the review. Um, I really like this movie. And I think story-wise, it's very inaccurate. And I think that a lot of the changes they made are for a better story. Having said that, like our criteria for a draw is typically like, we didn't love it, but others might. In this case, like, I love it, but a lot of people hate this movie and I think you have to give it a draw based on that. I think I was 16 or 17 and I went to the theater and I was like, Oh, this is fucking badass." And then um, I brought my dad cause I'm like, yeah, it's purchased. I didn't know the real story. I didn't know how inaccurate it was. Obviously I knew like Xerxes was not like that. Like, cause who would be like, it's impossible. He's not like an eight foot tall God. He's not an eight foot tall God. They didn't have like the guy with the scissor hands. They didn't have, you know, the the guy with the goat head like clearly i'm like all right it's not it's like a fantasy story i get it i didn't even know it was based on a comic so i i was like fine with it my dad was so pissed he hates this fucking movie he was like why they make xerxes like that he was the greatest shah of all (laughs) like (laughs) but if you think about it like someone who actually respects like persian history they fucking did xerxes dirty (laughs) like like that's bad. Um, they made him a homosexual Mexican guy, dressed in like lavish jewelry and half naked, or mostly naked, like ninety percent naked. Like if you really think about it, like imagine if I'm like a I'm a huge Batman fan and I go see a movie and he's like wearing a thong, dressed in jewelry, played by like I don't know like an Asian guy, and you're like, wait, who the fuck is this? Like this is not even Batman. What? And then they're like, this is the Batman you you never got because he's the right Batman. Like, everyone's now walking around being like, oh, yeah, those fucking, like, you know, like, people actually think this is what Persians were like. Sla- like, major slavers and just, like, arrogant douchebags and lizard faces. And, <laughs> like, you know, my dad, he, he has a big problem. And, like, naturally, the nation of Iran was like, oh, we hate this movie. But, of course, they're just looking for any reason to, like, it's just the movie. So that's why like, I'm not going to give it a loss. I'm not going to say don't watch it, but I enjoy, like I see, I relate way more to Leonidas than like any of the Persian characters in the movie. Well, to be fair, I think that's meant to be the, that way. Like regardless of who you are. Yeah. The Persian characters are, are just like straight up evil guys. Yeah. Um, or they just don't have a character. They're just, yeah, they're just monsters. Yeah. So I actually wanted to talk about some of the historical inaccuracies. I've got a little list, but um, I want to talk a little bit about the movie. So they added the subplot with Queen Gorgo. First of all, I don't even recognize her. Um, what's her name? I forget. Lena Headey, I think. Yeah. she. You know, it's weird. It's like she's a lot younger than when she started um, as Cersei. I mean, this, is well, couple... this was 2006. So when did when... Game of Thrones start? I don't know. Let's find out. I feel like I was at the end of college or like had to be already out or something. Uh, Game of Thrones season one was 2011, I think. Yeah, this was five years after. That's five years. I mean, that's not at, at her age. That's not a huge difference, but she seems so different. Like maybe it's the dark hair, but she's almost unrecognizable. See, I know her from uh, when she was in the Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles like yeah. the TV show. No one really uh, watched that, did they? <laughs> No, but I liked it. Um, it was really I heard unpopular. Was good. I heard that it, it was good. Was it? It, it? I think it was really good. Yeah, I thought it was great. But then they canceled it, so they 
But it's on like one uh, of those like it was like on ABC on like yeah it was like on ABC Thursday night and, and no one watches that shit anymore. Yeah. So it's well, like, well, the uh, problem was that they canceled it right in the middle of the third season, so they had to try to wrap up everything in like four episodes. So it it ends really abruptly, and a lot of people didn't like that. But she was really good as Sarah Connor, um, so that, that's where I know her from. And then I actually haven't seen her in much else. Like it's just those three things that come to mind. Uh, I, she's in Dread. Oh, is she? Yeah, she's the main bad guy. She's a pretty good actress, but um, what was I don't uh, know. what was the thing you told us? Do you remember like when we were talking about Game of Thrones like two years ago? You said like she dated the guy that played Braun, and he yeah. said that she was nuts or something like that. Well, the, the, she like hated him so much that they couldn't even be near each other anymore. Oh, I forgot this. This movie had a, a sequel that she was in. The sequel's which, trash. Yeah, the sequel is yeah. trash. Yeah. Rise of it. I own that one. I think I own it. I, I watched it. I did something with it. I watched it. It was awful. It was oh, yeah. really, really bad. Peter Green was in it playing a Persian person. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of these movies I don't really I recognize. She's so pale. Yeah. Um, so her whole subplot I actually find to be very boring. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, but I think it's like contextual wise, it fits, right? It's why he's only there with a 300. It's what he's fighting to hold out for. Well, you'll see in the in the inaccuracy, some of it I think might have been better had they stuck with it. But, okay. Um, with her, I, I, I really don't like all the sex in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it seems a little out of place. Well, it's just. It's not it's out very... of place. It's just unnecessary. It feels gratuitous. Yeah. Um, because when they're having sex, you're supposed to be like, "This is their last night together." I guess I I'm assuming that's what Zack Snyder was thinking. Like, mm-hmm. The last night, it's full of passion. He knows he's going off to die, basically. And she, I don't know. I at a, at a certain point, I'm like, "Am I supposed to be pretending like I'm having sex with her? Is that what the point of the scene is? Like, why do I need to see all her nipples and gyrations and every position that they did? <laughs> like, it's a bit much." I yeah. feel like one of the only scenes in this movie where they did stuff like that, where it actually sort of fit was with the Oracle. Cause at least then it seemed like they were doing like an artful scene of her. Did you like, have to see her nipples? No, you didn't have to. I'm talking more about like the, the nipples heart. were absolutely mandatory. If yeah, you did not whichever see way them. they point it says <laughs> like if you should go to war. I'm I'm talking more <laughs> about like her, uh, like, you know, like her silk sleeves, like being like artful smoke and stuff like that. It seemed more like an art. They filmed scene. her underwater. Oh, is that how they did it? Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, everything else, it seemed a little gratuitous. I mean, I, I still like, I don't think she need, we needed to see her nipples like 20 times. <laughs> if you wanted to be like, oh, this is super accurate to when they were around and they didn't care so much about nipples. Okay, but the movie is not accurate. You're, it sounds like you're just trying to show nipples <laughs> as much as possible. Um, if only they did that in Superman, it probably would have been a better movie. <laughs> It's weird how society like you can show nipples, you can show ass, you can't show a penis. You can you can show penis on screen. I mean, if you if they had shown penises in this movie, that's all anyone would have talked about, and it probably wouldn't have been seen by like as well. As, there, like, there isn't people. there already a notion about this movie that it's sort of like homoerotic, like you know, it's like. I mean, I don't know if it's a notion, but like there are ways of doing it because you could say this is a homoerotic movie, but if you watch Top Gun, like that is a gay movie. Those dudes can't stop touching each other the entire time. It's like it's pure homosexuality. So and like you don't see as much skin in that movie. Like I think it's just like if you're a gay guy, I guess you like seeing the muscles. They don't really sexualize the men. They're just sexy, I guess. Like it's not they just like, walk around shirtless and that and sweat their Yeah, sweat I mean the it, they waxed all their hair, I'm guessing. Like I'm going to go out on a limb and, and say, based on my own personal experience, that Gerard Butler is not that hairless. I, I'd have to assume <laughs> he's got something like me, like hair on his arms or chest. Like, there's got to be something. Mm-hmm. Um, the captain, that dude's hairy as fuck. Like, they, he, they're, they've clearly all been waxed. And, um, okay, but so what? You know, I used to follow their workout regime. You could find it online, and it's actually not bad. Um, really? Yeah, I had good results. I just don't care to do it anymore. Um, it was like deadlifting and uh, clean and jerks and pull ups and like I still do some of that. Um, it actually was a decent workout regime. It was a lot more like body weight type stuff rather than just straight like bench press that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
um yeah i guess as i'm getting older like i don't want to do that stuff as much but um i remember enjoying it maybe i'll do it again um so uh anyway yeah i, I don't think that it's a homoerotic film i think xerxes is made to be kind of homosexual i don't even know if kind of is fair enough I, like he's pretty overtly gay <laughs> I, don't, I don't know um he's also kind of like threatening leonidas with like intimacy. a good time <laughs> yeah he is like he kind of is saying like a good time like he puts his hand on the shoulder like you know he would get me too if it was today like um what's the you ever seen that meme where it's like Thanos forced to return stones after sexual assault allegations or like his tweets? Yeah, appeared. yeah, yeah. I love he, like those. Xerxes forced to return all stolen land after after offensive yeah. tweets pop up. Xerxes forced to cancel comeback to her degrees. See, <laughs> um, I do like it though for a story perspective where he's all like Xerxes is all about pleasure and giving into impulse, and the Spartans are like, we cut all of that out. Is it historically accurate? No, but it does make for a good story of like good versus evil. Mm -hmm. Like it, that part does work. Um, Dominic West is famous for The Wire. Uh, he's the corrupt senator. He is also in um, The Crown. He's playing Prince Charles hmm. um, in the new season, new next two seasons. Um, yeah, so I saw Michael Fassbender in there. I forgot he was in this movie. His career is so odd. Yeah, it really yeah. is weird. It seemed like he, it took a long time. He was in everything. He's in like Band of Brothers, just like kind of like, oh, blink and you'll miss it type roles like this one where you're like, wait, that's Michael Fassbender? After you know him from X-Men or whatever, he, he does a couple movies here and there and then just basically stops. Like as soon as he became a household name, he kind of just disappeared. Yeah. There's that a Tomb Raider chick. There's a reviewer I watch who claims uh, his joke is he picks his films by dartboard. Because everything is so like odd and it makes like it's I mean, all Magneto, different. Magneto, Band of Brothers. This is a good choice, honestly. Um, I don't know what other small things he's appeared in, but then he did uh, Magneto. Like that was a smart choice, a good franchise choice for him. And he's also great for the role. He did Steve Jobs. A biopic is like you know how people win Academy Awards typically. And and then I don't know what what was he in after that. Let's find out. Uh... He's gonna show me his career on on Wikipedia, or do I have to look on IMDb? Wikipedia. Oh, let's see, IMDb Michael Fassbender. Uh, he's in Shame. I forgot about that one. Uh, shame. shame. It's like an indie film, but he's like he's like a addicted to pornography, and it like ruins his life. Um, let's see. Um, so I Band see, of like, Brothers, yeah. NCIS. What was his uh, first role? It was just TV. Yeah, Band of Brothers was the second the things one. I noticed. Murphy's Law, Hex, 300 was in 2006. So that was like... his first movie, it looks like. Let's see if I can... mm -hmm. And then Inglorious Bastards. I forgot about that. That was another one where he, like, you know, no one knew his name. Well, um, he was barely even in Inglorious Bastards either. He's set up as this big badass and he dies like halfway yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. And He's then he was Fable in Jonah Fate. Hex. Nobody remembers that. Yeah, apparently. Is this... Didn't Jonah Hex suck? I never saw it. I never saw it either. He was in Haywire. That's a weird choice of a movie for him. And then he did Prometheus, which like I think a lot of people liked and yeah, liked him in it. Good. He's in Twelve Years a Slave. Like, you know, his 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 uh his roles are like going up and up. Um Slow West was kind of a bad western, I think. He played Macbeth. I don't know. He played Steve Jobs. X Men Apocalypse was kind of where it was like he stopped doing things. Um there's a alien covenant, I guess. He was in the Assassin's Creed movie. I completely forgot about that. Oh too. yeah. I heard that was bad. That was really like he had already kind of he was on a downward trajectory after that. <laughs> yeah. Because right before that was X-Men Apocalypse. We were like, eh. Steve Jobs. Weren't there two Steve Jobs movies that came out? It was him time? and it was Aston Kutcher, too. Yeah, they there was two. So like that one also kind of got slipped away. So really Days of Future Past was when I think he became like truly like a household name. And then all of everything after that was just a miss. Kung Fury 2. What the fuck is that? Um, X-Men Dark Phoenix. The Wild yeah. Bunch is a rumor that he might be in. He did a lot of stuff for Alien Covenant, it seems. He's in a movie called The Wild Bunch. 
about a gang of American bandits. Uh, it's a yeah, so he does all sorts of just like kind of nonsense. Well, basically. the movie in, inside the movie, the rumor is Jamie Foxx and Peter Dinklage are his co stars. <laughs> so that should be okay. Um, it, it's kind of interesting because I mean, looking at the timeline of his films from about 2001 or 2002, he has pretty consistent work up until he gets to Dark Phoenix, and now he's been on like almost like a four or five year break. Because he, it's Dark Phoenix is his last thing that yeah. he's been in. Before. I know he started a that production company, but uh, I mean, I don't know anything else about it. Um, all right, let's go through the movie and talk about like our favorite parts. I don't really mm-hmm. care for that whole opening scene of this is Sparta, uh, yeah. where he kicks the guy into the well. Yeah, that, that to me um, is like. It's I iconic. think it's one of the most famous. Yeah, it's iconic, but I also it's not my favorite scene. Yeah. Um what about my favorite, um go for it. What about <clears throat> like the origin of Leonidas? Yeah, first of all, the the story of him like killing a wolf is not accurate. Also, the rumor is that it's taken from actually Xerxes's origin where he like had to prove himself by killing a male lion, which also sounds like bullshit. Mm. but what the Spartans actually had to do was sneak away and kill a slave without being caught. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was their actual like final test. I don't know how, I don't know how that even applies. <laughs> well, I mean, in terms of functional skills, right, it would be useful. So you're essentially learning but that they're not ninjas. To... What do you right, But do like, it? okay. Can you sneak away? Can you kill someone and get back? Like, and also you're murdering, well, did you have to what prove you it? Like, did you have to bring the body back, or you just have to not get caught? I guess I don't know. There's like people being found dead all the time. They're yeah, like, and they're all the slaves. One must have graduated. Yeah, I know. Like, oh, he did it. Like, but when you think about the movie, like free men stood against like slavers or whatever. Yeah, and in reality, yeah. they're running around murdering their own slaves. And then he calls the Athenians boy lovers. It's like, and they're uh... the ones. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like didn't they ha- didn't they like purposely do it like for bonding? Yes. Yeah. Like, like I'm that. gonna pound your asshole so that you're bonded <laughs> to me. I mean, <laughs> different times. Um, oh, that's that's good. That's gonna be an ism someday. <laughs> I don't mind the origin. It's okay. Like it's cool. It sort of builds up like the warrior mentality. Um, I do. I do like, like, there's just random bits and pieces that I really like. Like, for one, I like when Leonidas is watching the Oracle and he's got, like, the cloak. And he's mm-hmm. watching them, like, with disgust. I like that part. Um, yeah, I'll say that this movie, like I said, it had some really good visuals. The uh, the makeup has amazing stuff, visuals. Uh, the makeup yeah, on those mystics looks disgusting. And I think that's yeah. really impressive. Yeah. Um, I like the, the way, like... I like the narration, the storytelling, how it informs you. It's a good way to tell like a battle because it allows you to kind of skip time. Yeah. Instead of showing you like it'll it'll just skip to the next morning or something. Like it doesn't have to be linear that way, like so so closely, step by step. Um then there's the part where like I like when he's presented with the three hundred Spartans and he he like compliments the captain for being such a good captain. Like I like that part. Um, they go up against the Arcadians and he, he's like, what's your profession? Like, I like that. You know, I brought more soldiers than you did. Um, I even like the part, which uh, the movie has a lot of criticism for being ableist because of Ephialtes and how he can't like hold the shield. I like that because in reality, like, um, they would have killed Ephialtes just for being like broken, you know? Yeah. Like like, Leonidas would have killed him right there. Because he probably sees no value in that life. And instead in this movie, I thought he made a pretty good point. It's like, we fight as a unit. Although later in the movie, they don't fight it as a unit after like the first 10 seconds. Yes. They kind of just break apart and start like doing like twirls and being badasses. (laughs) It was like a, it was like a tactical move. Had he just let him like be like a pity soldier and like walk out there and get himself killed. He would have saved himself all this trouble. See, I would have let him do it. I would have said you're not part of the phalanx, but just go out there and fucking die. <laughs> like if that's what you want, I'm okay with it. It sounds like that's what he's asking for. Go have a Spartan's beautiful death, like they said. 
Basically. I would let him stand like way in front. I was like, you go out there and you you see them first. Like go out on your shield. Like I'm okay with that. Um like if anything, like if you want to brag to the Persians, like go out there and be like, see, even this like malformed creature is more advanced at fighting than you are. And that could probably demoralize them a little bit. Um so so he tells him like, Yeah, you can't do this. And yeah, it's true. If you had let him, he would have saved himself a lot of trouble. But um, so then they, I think they cut like almost immediately to the first battle at that point. Well, they see the ships first. Oh, they see the ships. Yeah. yeah. I like the way Leonidas like keeps his composure. I also think just visually, like I used to have that. It's as a cool wallpaper. scene. It's a really um, cool scene. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then, then they see the ships are still there. And, uh, Michael Fassbender was like, I can't wait to die. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> um, and then they have the first battle. You know, the come and get them line is not bad. That's actually, like, they say that he actually said that. And that's basically my favorite scene is when um, the uh, Persians smash into the phalanx. And yes. they kind of get pushed back. And there's that moment where the pushing you see stops. The system work. Yeah. And you're like, this is why they're not crazy. Like, they actually know what they're doing. And then, and then five minutes later, it's like, okay, it's never not, mind. It's not They're all minutes. demigods. It's yeah. like 10 seconds. Like, <laughs> they push him back twice, and then they just start opening up and, like, slashing. I'm like, okay, that's – how do you know when someone's going to go, like, individual? But and... by the end of that battle scene, they're, like, running around, like, jumping off shields, yeah. twirling. And I'm like, okay, you, you routed them. Like, they, they, they're all running away, and that's why you're able to do that the first time. Fine. Um, they push him off the cliff. That's cool. Um, so like, I, I mean, I, I still, I like the movie. I, I forget what, what comes next after that first battle. So they, they have like a, a cheer. They have like a celebration, yeah. um, that they've Is won. The they lost no one. Uh, no, I don't. Well, because the first battle has multiple stages. Cause remember after they push them off the cliff arrows, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Fight and that shade. part's cool too. I like. That and then too. yeah, that is a cool scene. And then there's like montages, like they get charged by a bunch of cavalry. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that first battle is really like three or four battles that just um, get cut up. They're just showing off the Persian forces that they've accumulated. When um, when they're laughing while the arrows are coming at them, that's mm-hmm. actually a very realistic thing. Because like I've been in hard battles where it's like we're we're both laughing, like as we're fighting. So I, I could understand how somebody would laugh in a situation like that. I don't know what like the casual viewer thinks of that. Like, oh, they're so crazy. But to me, it actually seemed like a very realistic touch to add that to the film. Yeah, um, and there's like tons of records of people who would do that in like stressful situations. It's just a way to like yeah. bleed stress. Um, so after after the like four battle sequence, then Xerxes shows up. Well, I I, I, I like the I like when they push the elephants off. I like um, the grenades. Yeah, the grenades are cool. I like how it backfires. Yeah, I feel like the montage came later, though. No, there were two montages. The first montage was just push them off the cliff, arrows, cavalry. Then Xerxes. Oh, right, right, right. The horses, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So then he meets with Xerxes, and like I think that's a fine scene, aside from the you know problems with Xerxes. <laughs> and then... Um, and then so he goes back, and isn't that the Night of the Immortals? Yes, Immortal Strike after Xerxes. That's my favorite battle part, the scene. Um, Leonidas fighting the ogre. Like I love watching that. I love the way he like sees the bigger opponent, and like he like kind of poses up, um, like because he realizes he has to be agile. And the way he gets flung around and fights, and then the blade scratches his helmet and his eye. Um, the way people try to save him. I love the concept of the Immortals. Um, they call them immortals because there was always a thousand or something. It's not because they were like invincible. Immortal, yeah. yeah. Just the number never changes. Yeah, it was. It was his personal guard. It, they weren't like a. To my knowledge, they weren't like a fighting force. Um, and in this movie, they're monsters. So. Yeah, they're like lizard people who have taken some potions to like. But that's kind of cool. Like, if it wasn't like a slap in the face to my people, like. <laughs> It's it's kind of a cool concept just for fantasy. Mm-hmm. Like if it was not Persians, it was just like a made up thing. 
I'd be like, yeah, these are fucking, these are the cool enemies. And like, um, it's like, yeah, they're whatever they, they might live forever, but they're like the Spartans can beat them by just being more badass. Like, I like it, you know, um, the way he saves him, uh, from the ax and, you know, just like, I think that that's a really cool part. Even when they bring in the, the Arcadians, Acadians, Arcadians, I don't know. And they, they're, they're shown to be like brawlers. Like there's clearly intention in the, in the different fighting styles. Mm -hmm. They're like very wild. And I like that. Um, I think Leonidas puts his helmet back on and like, that's a cool scene too. I forget what he, I think they charge at the immortals after that. Yeah. Well, the immortals like kind of fall back um, because yeah. they're panicked because they just beheaded their ogre guy. Yeah. And so then Leonidas gets up and it's kind of badass and all the Spartans like rally to him and the yeah. mortals are like, what the fuck? And they yeah. charge. Yeah. Um, and the Acadians jump out from behind. So then what's next? Is that the montage then? Of like yeah, then, the so no, then you've got the moment where it's like, even now our king begins to hope, like, we can do this, we can win. And yeah. then it's like badass rock music, they're walking out, and... I don't you know, mind that. I like no, it. I don't mind it either, but it, it's this is why I said I'm kind of ashamed to give it a win, because I like it, but I'm also like, alright, this is like... It knows what it's doing, and it does it really well. And so you get the badass rock music. They're walking out. That's when you get the montage with the grenades, with the elephants. Um, you get them just like fucking people up left and right. But then, um, the, but then it it transitions into when um, Astalos dies. Yes, and because the way it transitions Astanos, is that after the grenades, um, they have whips crack, barbarians howl. The um, rhinoceros. Yeah, there, the there rhinoceros. Rhino. Yeah. yeah, the rhino charges, and that's when Astalus he destroys it. He throws the spear, remember, and he like mm -hmm. doesn't move, and it yeah. goes down right before him. And then when his father is like recognizing him after him and Michael Fassbender have been cutting through people, he, the one of the horsemen comes out of the mist and just, just takes his relieves head off. him. And of that's his... a very good scene too. Um, it's also hard, like, if you recall from my graphic novel, when Adu gets it, I, it's, like, lifted from that because it's really hard to find, like, the concept of someone getting decapitated, like, reference images like that. This is the only movie that has it that I know of where it actually will show it to you. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually, like, you don't see it, and then, like, the person's on the floor or something. Um, but, like, to see, like, how does the body actually, like, carry its weight as it's falling, that sort of thing, I use that for reference. You just need to go watch some cartel videos, Gia. You'll be able to find all sorts yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Um, you're, st you're standing in the in the arena of your universe. He just takes out a handsaw and starts cutting his head off. So that's when uh, the captain loses his shit, which I think is great. And then, and so they're not celebrating that night. And and that's when the Acadian comes and tells them that they've been betrayed. Mm -hmm. And even when Xerxes like offers Ephialtes like. Leonidas wanted you to stand and I just want you to kneel. Like I like it's, it makes sense that why Fialtes would, would give in. Um, he's being accepted and there's like all the freaks there. Like it's actually not like poorly written. Um, and then, so Leonidas immediately goes into like crazy mode where he's like, we're fucking going to do this. And the kid is like, this, you guys are crazy and whatever. Tonight we dine in hell. That's a good line. He sends uh, Delios away, I think is his name. Um, yeah. The guy from Iron Fist. To tell the story. Yeah, in Lord of the Rings. Um, he sends him away. And, you know, like there's some cool stuff about the truth of that. Um, and I really like the whole third, like not the third act, but, but the final battle. The last sequence of the battle. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love the way it looks. I love everything about it. It doesn't go on for too long. Um, part of me wishes maybe they did like fight to the last man, like in a br more brutal way. Um, uh, but this is more poetic. And also, I think that like the point there was that now that they've been outflanked, they can't really fight to the last man, like because the archers are on the heights. So it's yeah, like... but the movie doesn't really seem to care about the logistics of their fighting <laughs> system. So you know, like we said, after the first ten seconds, they can basically like do whatever they want. Um. Like they took off their he flies up the cliff and fight. starts just like stabbing everyone in the eye. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, throws his shield like Captain America and it like ping pongs between like 50 of them. 
I mean, if you saw something like that, it wouldn't be that out of place in this movie. Oh, can like, I can it? I ask you guys something really quick about this? No, so the, we don't talk uh, about things on this podcast. So the wall they rebuild out of rocks and corpses. Is, is there a reason why the the Persians didn't just blow through that with like all their giant creatures that they had in the army? Well, I think, and I'm I'm being very generous here. I'm kind of being an apologist. My understanding is you've got like the hot gates, which is like that narrow valley, that crevasse, and then the wall is like next to it, blocking the coast. For them to like get up to the wall and actually like deal with it would require them to ignore what's happening at the hot gates. So the Spartans can kind of come out and fuck with them. Yeah. Like either way, they have to either deal with the Spartans if they want to go through the wall. Okay. Because the, the reason why I ask is because in that first scene when they're holding the hot gates and they're like pushing back everybody with their phalanx, uh, you can very clearly see that they're both on the same side. So you, on one side you have the hot gates and on the other side you have the wall on one like flat surface. So if yes. they really wanted to, they could have surrounded them and then they would have just had like a force take down the wall and just keep moving down the coast if they really wanted to, I think. Because it didn't really seem that stable. You know, most of the film was shot on like one rock in front of a green screen. And the rock was just filmed at different angles. Really? If you go look at the behind the scenes, it's like the same spot. They're just, they're just standing in different places. So I don't know. I, I don't think there's a real like that's battlefield. Funny. I think it's just like they're in a tiny spot and that's that's all you need to know. Okay. Um and they can't really leave. Like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um all right, let's look at and then the last scene that I really like is when the whole army's like running. Yeah, the I charge. Like well we're not gonna talk about like his death or anything like that. Like throws the spirit uh no, it's well, good. Yeah, let's talk about let's look at um, the fight to the death would be longer and more dramatic. These are uh, what a historically accurate version of 300 would be like. I read this already, and I kind of like this suggestion. The surrounded Spartans perish rather quickly at the end of the film, but in reality, the surviving rear guard of the Greek army put up much more of a fight. This is one area where the real event was actually more dramatic than the fictional portrayal. With demise certain, the Greeks advanced and took the fight to the Persians. They had one simple objective, take as many Persians with them as possible. The fight was ferocious. Once the spears were broken, the Greeks drew their swords and some even resorted to fighting with their bare hands. The Greeks trained extensively in a fighting style called Pancration, an early version of mixed martial arts with no rules. So it's highly possible that quite a few Persians were strangled or beaten to death in the final moments of battle. Yikes. Now I'm thinking a different version after he misses the spear and they all rush at them. It doesn't have to be all arrows. Like, what if Xerxes wants to like like what if you add some lines where he's like i want to punish them and so they go in and they're just swarmed by a horde and it could be only a five minute scene but it's like totally brutal up close like beating each other back until there's no one left yeah the last guy goes down and that last guy would be probably leonidas who stands up one last time and faces the arrows is what like i don't know it would, like like xerxes could call his people back when leonidas is the only one left Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like, I I think it could have been cool. I will say though that scene is I think one of one of my top three in the entire movie, just because he throws the spear at uh he throws the spear at him, and even though it misses, it's still that notion like a oh, god can bleed. Like he hits him in the face, so even if he didn't yeah. die, like his forces see that he's vulnerable. It, it it is weird that the movie doesn't really actually ever address the fact that he fucking missed. <laughs> like. Like Leonidas, you kind of fucked up. Like, I don't know. It might have gone totally different. But look at this image. Like, this is like a work of art. Mm-hmm. This is cool. Um, uh, Spartans get all the credit for their noble sacrifice, but they weren't the only ones who stayed behind. Um, the Spartans didn't even want to stay behind. Some historians have suggested, but were cut off and chose to buy time for the rest of the army to get away. Leonidas was possibly willing to accept his fate due to a prophecy that Sparta would either lose a king or be destroyed. That sounds to me like a much better prophecy than like, oh no, you, you have to respect the yeah. anniversary. <laughs> he, he, he has to go. He's probably thinking, I have to go fight them with my small guard because if I die, then Sparta will like survive. So he has to know on some level, like my job is to inflict as much damage as possible. And once I fall, 
like Sparta will rise. And you could still do the whole like holiday thing, but I don't know. It's kind of an interesting, well, different wrinkle. Well, wasn't the prophecy he got in the movie fake anyway? Because they were all paid off by the Persians. I don't know how it could be fake if the girl's just like not wise to what's going I, on. Well, I remember hearing a theory once, and it's probably not true, but I remember hearing a theory saying, like the 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 words she's speaking somehow, if you translated them, said a different message. And meanwhile, this guy was just saying some like utter Maybe. bullshit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, surviving Spartans, 400 thespians, 700 Thebans, and most likely the Helot slaves who accompanied the Spartan army. Sucks for them. Um, troop diversity would be added to the Greek army as well as the use of rotation to keep the men fresh. Um, so there would have been other types of soldiers present. Light skirmishers called the Siloi were a common sight on ancient battlefields as poor citizens who couldn't afford the equipment to fight in the phalanx instead fought primarily with missiles. They would harass the opposing side before the melee and retreat behind the main infantry line once the hand-to-hand -hand combat began. I feel like if you were going to do the ending where they fight to the death, like with their hands, having people, having their own like archer people and also seeing like from above that they could inflict like damage on the Persians, I think you could have made it a little bit different. Um, and then you could have seen the, those same archers get flanked. Maybe you could have added that scene. Like that's how they find out that that, that route is um, gone. Also like the Greeks... 300 Spartans alone would retire and be overwhelmed before the second day was done. Sources mentioned that while Spartans distinguished themselves in combat, other Greeks held the line for significant periods to allow them to recover. So, I mean, yeah. that's okay. That doesn't have to be in the movie. Um, there was, there's actually two Spartan kings. Yep. Um, the Spartan king was more of a general than a monarch. His powers in domestic matters were limited and he could not declare war. The two kings served as a check on the other's power and to ensure there was always a king present in the city. Leonidas' co-ruler was Leotychidas II, who achieved some naval successes against the Persians but was caught up in a bribery scandal <laughs> after the war and deposed. So that's kind yeah, of it. I mean, there shouldn't be two kings because that, like, that's a weird concept. So in Sparta, if you're deposed as king, are you? what happens to you? Do you die? I don't know. Yeah. Mm. They kill you? Um there were two Spartans who survived. The first was Aristodemus, who fell ill and was sent home before the last stand. He was shunned back in Sparta. When Aristodemus returned to Lacedaemon, I don't know, he was disgraced and dishonored. This was the manner of his dishonor that no Spartan would give him fire nor speak with him, and they called him for disgrace, Aristodemus the coward. The unfortunate Aristodemus redeemed himself at the decisive battle of Plataea, which is the one at the end, where he fought with reckless abandon and was felled. Another Spartan, Pantides, Titus, I don't know, was sent to nearby Thessaly to, do, to deliver a message and failed to return in time for the battle. The disgraced Spartan took his own life, unable to live with the dishonor to his name. Yikes. I mean, I probably would have hung around for the next battle. but um, This is the real message Leonidas had for his wife. Marry a good man who will treat you well, bear him children, and live a good life. I don't think it was necessary, but it's a nice sentiment. Especially since it's like kind of like an, uh, it's kind of almost emasculating to be like, you know, go find another man. Yeah. It's such a masculine movie. Like it might have helped. Um, the Helots and the Perioki would be added to show a true representation of Spartan society. Um, it's the Helots are world. the slaves. Yeah. Recall the scene where Leonidas points out to the Arcadians that all of his men are soldiers and soldiers only. That begs a rather obvious question. Who did all the work to allow Spartans to focus only on warfare? Answer, the permanent underclass of slaves called the Helots and the free but non-citizen inhabitants of Laconia called the Periochi. The Helots were people of neighboring city-state forcibly conquered by the Spartans and subjected to oppressive rule. <laughs> the elders of Sparta declared war upon the Helots each year and a traditional rite of passage for Spartan boys was the murder of a Helot. Jesus. Uh -huh. The nature of this arrangement meant that Spartans lived in fear of a Helot revolt should the army be away for too long. The I love had how every year they declare war. The Helots are like, dude, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? They're going to declare war on That's us again? crazy. The Periochi had it better as they were the free men of the Peloponnese, the area ruled by Sparta. 
They filled a number of key roles that the citizens of Sparta felt were beneath them, such as trade and manufacturing. They supplied men for the army regularly and, and regularly fought alongside the Spartans in military campaigns. The Greeks should stay in formation until the final fight. We, we talked about that. Um, it doesn't make sense for them to fight as a unified thing and then immediately abandon that. Yeah, but I just think, like, also he was like, I don't want to show that. Yeah. The title would be 7,000 to reflect the real size of the army. I think, I think like, focusing just on the Spartans, though, is, is probably a better storytelling. The protagonist would be a much older Leonidas. Um, Leonidas yeah. was about 60 by the time of the battle, most likely still in good shape and an experienced war warrior, but still 60. There's only so much someone can physically do at that age. A truly accurate portrayal of Leonidas would be a seasoned commander setting off on one less campaign. I actually kind of like the version of Leonidas that you get in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey because he, he does look kind of old. He's got the gray beard. I never he's still a good. It. He's still a good fighter, and you know, it's a little accentuated, but it, it's pretty good. Um, I like who we have in this. Uh, the Agoji would be changed to show the real final test. Oh, that's the one. Instead, um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, the final test was actually the murder of a slave without getting caught rather than hunting down a wolf. Um, the firstborn sons of Spartan kings were exempt, but as the thirdborn son of Anaxandridas, Leonidas would have gone through a goji like any other Spartan boy. The film showed him shows him being crowned upon king upon his return, but in reality, Leonidas didn't become king until much later in life. His ascension may also have been the result of a coup to depose the unpopular Cleomenes, his half-brother, and the father of his wife, Gorgo. If you look closely at the image, you'll see a small detail the movie absolutely got right. The child Leonidas isn't wearing sandals. Instead of softening their feet with shoe or sandal, his, his rule was to make them hardy through going barefoot. This habit, if practiced, would achieve, as he believed, enable them to scale heights more easily and clamber down precipices with less danger. In fact, with his feet so trained, the young Spartan would leap and spring and run fast, faster unshod than any other shod in the ordinary way. That makes sense. Leonidas probably wasn't the last to die. Um, Herodotus tells a fine story of Leonidas falling near the end of the battle and a fierce struggle over his body breaking out. Four times the Persians wrested the body of the king from the Greeks, and four times they took it back. It's probably just that, a fine story, but it's reasonably to conclude that the king who was in his 60s wasn't the last Greek standing. I think narratively he should be. Yeah. Um, Ephialtes was really just a regular guy who saw an opportunity to get rich. A local goat herder, Ephialtes, was aware of the secret mountain pass that would be the Greeks' undoing and offered to show the Persians the way for a price. A bounty was put on his head and he was slain a few years later. His name means nightmare in Greek, forever tainted by this infamous act. There's also a possibility that someone else might have betrayed the location of the past of Xerxes, but Herodotus dismisses this. Of course, given his own less than stellar reputation for truth telling, it's quite difficult to say either way. I mean, that's so fucked up. Imagine going down to history for selling out your own people. Mm -hmm. and, and now your name means nightmare. Yeah. And not only that, he, he, like he fucked. got hunted down. Um, so that's it. I, you know, I think I would have made a, a, a few changes to the story. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, do you guys have anything else on this one? Uh, I just have uh, a fight of the week. I have, oh, yeah. one, I have one quick comment. Um, have you guys ever seen the joke version of this film called Meet the Spartans? I was going to ask that. I've never I seen have it, not. but I know about it. I, I've, saw, I've seen it. It, it. It's okay. It's pretty, It's like one of those like you know, scary movie. Type My understanding things, but, with um, those type of parodies is that it's really hard for it to be funny before it just ends up being like too much. It's, you know? it's, it's pretty stupid in times, but there's one scene that I, I keep thinking of whenever I watch this movie. And it's, it's the scene before the sex scene with his wife, where he's standing in front of the city at night, like with no pants on in, in meet the Spartans. It's really funny because, uh, it, there's like a bunch of women laughing at him and he looks really dejected and it pans down to his crotch and there's just nothing there. <laughs> Part it's, of me does want to watch it. I mean, it's it's a really stupid movie. You got to go into it remembering that, but it's, it's yeah. I thought I it mean, was pretty funny yeah, at first. Um. But anyway, that's it. That's it for me. All right. So the, the fight of the week, Kia, you've kind of already gone over these. So if you were Leonidas, you were in Leonidas's position. What would you do? The big the, with the three big moments, okay? Because for, assuming you have to do the same rough stuff, how do you handle Ephialtes? What I do let you him do? Die. Have, what do you do tactically? 
And how do you deal with Xerxes? Okay, so I would I would bring the archers with us. Okay. And um allowing Ephialtes to to die would mean that they don't get exposed by the goat path. So potentially we could hold out. Um it doesn't seem like I don't know where they get their food and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not just sure. Fish off the side of the cliff. I'm assuming somehow that was taken care of. Um, so I would maintain the phalanx at the hot gates. Um, I don't really have much of an option. It's still a losing battle. At some point, like we would get tired. So logistically, in a real situation, I would have to bring like a reserve to swap out. I don't know. I don't know what, like I, I I don't know the move the movie is like unwinnable, the the scenario that they have, um, but I I don't know why he can't just take more soldiers. He says it's my three hundred personal guard. It's like well why not five hundred? Yeah, why or not a thousand? Yeah, and if you ordered the Spartans, would they refuse you because of the oracles? Like I don't know the senators might have a problem, but. I'm like I'm in, I'm an army. I'm gonna go face the army. Um, I read somewhere that that Leonidas was actually ordered to go, mm. like because they had two kings that they they ordered him. One and, had to go. Yeah, like they ordered a small <laughs> force to go by time. So knowing that, I probably would have dug in and like forced them to come get us one by one. Um, and tried to hold them. We could. You wouldn't. Have, you wouldn't have broken out the Farsi, the ancient Farsi. Like Xerxes, this uh, isn't who you are. You're better than this. Yeah, I guess I would have if I. Yeah. Eat a like, first of all, put on some clothes. Like... <laughs> I definitely wouldn't have been like. I'd be like, why, why, why do you need to rule me if you're just gonna let me be in charge? Because that's obviously not gonna happen. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, you know, I don't know because in reality, you know, Xerxes was one of the more and like Cyrus, I believe his father. Yeah, so they were like some of the most progressive. By the way, yeah, I was right? reading about them. Do you know that Cyrus the Great was one of the first like world leaders to ever free the Jews? Yeah, I know that. Like, it was basically the only place in antiquity. Yeah, it was the only place in antiquity where, like, you could be Jewish and you weren't just going to be, like, slaughtered on sight. Yeah. They, like, celebrated him. Yeah. The Jewish people did. Yeah. And now see. today we have yeah. Kanye West. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how time passes. Like, <laughs> Everett doesn't look as amused. Like, back uh, then, I'm they go, my free the, the Jews. <laughs> and then today, like, fucking Kanye's on Twitter saying... Kill them like all. Death you know? God three. Like, <laughs> yeah. Free their souls instead. <laughs> um, all right, we can move on. Uh, Roundup. I watched Mindhunter. Um, mm. it's really good. I I watched it because the Dahmer thing kind of made me want to go back and watch it. Um, has anybody watched the Dahmer thing yet? No, I haven't got a chance. Pretty yet. intense. Like it, it's the type of show. If you put on the first episode, you're watching the other. I'm gonna check it out. I know um, that it's like that. Um, something I have to like pay attention to, so I want to find a good time for it. Yeah, and then so it was good. It, the second season ends abruptly. I wish they do a third. Um, yeah, so much. Having watched it already, the set, the part where they're like trying to find the Atlanta killer actually goes on for a bit longer than I remember. Um, mm-hmm. And then I feel like the ending of it does not get a satisfying conclusion which is kind of the point i guess but yeah it almost feels like it's like a half like half of season two and now we're gonna get the second half of season two but like it never came (laughs) yeah um Um, i i think that's all well i watched uh cyberpunk edge runners um i think it's good i think you know it's it's designed to be a single season it's 10 episodes like 20 to 24 minutes each um good voice acting the story is very relevant it's a great critique of capitalism i think it it more than anything made me think that the cyberpunk world is cool versus the game that i played an hour of and then never played again um people say that game is good now criticism of it uh you know there's 
nudity in it, um, which I would describe as like more tasteful. Like it's not like uh, it's not like the nudity in Three Hundred. Um, uh-huh. it's more just like there happen to be people who aren't wearing clothes at certain points, and it's not like oh my god, blah 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 isn't wearing clothes. It's more like two characters are just having a conversation. Um, and someone has like a towel and they're just like, anyways. Um, yeah, so I would recommend like checking it out. Um, if you have it has interest subtitles in... though, right? Well, no, it's in English. It's in English with oh, subtitles. Yeah. Oh, there is a Japanese version of it, but I oh, watched it because I, I, it played a trailer for me that I, uh... yeah, it played when I loaded it up, it was playing in Japanese and I changed it to English. And I think the English voice actors are great. So mm-hmm. I saw an advertisement for, a documentary about the dream team, like from the Olympics, the basketball team, the redeem team, because mm-hmm. you know there used to be a dream team, and then they started to lose for a while at the Olympics. The and then redeem team. It was like with Kobe, LeBron, Wade. Um, I don't know. It seemed interesting. And then uh, there's also the Jeffrey Dahmer tapes, which I don't think I really need to go into that. I, I, I've had enough. Uh, <laughs> I got some stuff for a roundup too. If you guys want to hear about it, no, um, we don't want to hear your stuff. So I have a, I have a sort of a big thing, but I'll go for the smaller thing first. Is um I've been going back and I've been rewatching Attack on Titan, and I think it's fantastic. I think it's got great uh, it's got great music. I, that's the one thing I forgot about it. Um, I'm, I'm I think I'm on season three right now. That's fantastic. But my big thing is uh over the last two and a half weeks I've been doing the giant MCU rewatch just you know on my TV while I've been working, and I have a, I have a couple notes if you guys want to hear them. Sure. It's 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 an experience. I'll give it that. It's a, it's extremely long, but I think it's worth it at least one time. Just you know, have it on in the background and just sort of see the details they add. Are you talking about but, the uh, one shots? Yeah, it's everything. It's every well, movie. Are you watching uh, Agents of Shield? No. Okay, so there's some things they omit. So any of the television shows, uh, they they remove like most of the television shows. They add a few clips from them to add a little bit of context. Like they add a, there's a few scenes from Agent Carter. There's no Agents of Shield because I don't think it's canon anymore. Uh, there's a few clips from like, um, like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but only like as flashbacks, like nothing in the present. They're only they're like little flavor scenes, but who's they? Whoever the guy who edited this entire thing together. Oh, so it's like one movie. Yeah, it's all in order. One thing. Oh. Well, it's 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 one movie in eight parts. Where are you watching that? It's a, uh, it's um, uh, what's it called? It's on it's on Mega. You know, like that file website. He has it all uploaded there. You can just stream it. But that's the first note I have. So is you're streaming you, um, it from your computer to your TV. Mm-hmm. I have it on my. I'm just playing it on my laptop, and I have it plugged into the HDMI port on my TV, and I just watch it like that. But I will say, you can either do it one of two ways. You either have to watch it with a VPN. Because it's so obscenely long that Mega won't let you watch it in its entirety. After like four hours, it'll say, now you have to pay for it or you have to wait two hours to watch it again. So you just have to keep switching VPNs so you can keep watching it. Or you can download all the parts, which accumulate to about 100 gigabytes. So, so is Daredevil in it? No, none of the TV shows are in it. You said some are. I said some clips from some of the shows. Yeah. None of the Netflix shows are there because it's not canon technically. None of Agents of Shield is there because it's not canon. They use some of the Disney Plus shows, like they used uh, they used Wanda's flashback scenes from WandaVision. They used uh, the Winter Soldier going around and killing guys in. Do Falcon they Winter address Soldier. whether or not Wanda, like, if her kids are real, like what is? They they you don't get to any of that because it's it's only it's from uh, in terms of release, it's everything from Iron Man two thousand eight to Endgame in to uh, twenty nineteen. Oh, everything from there to there in order but i have i have Wait, let me why get would to, uh, wanda have flashbacks from wandavision oh just because uh yeah it's when she was a kid and when she got her powers those are the scenes they show um so it's interesting context but i have here let me get to my notes so the first thing i'll say is there's the extra context they give you in chronological order i think makes some of the movies better so for, uh so what i mean is they take every little bit of every deleted scene, every unfinished scene, like there's a couple sprinkled in there, you know, like with green screen stuff, that's not fully generated. Um, but it, it makes some of the movies better. So for instance, Iron Man three, when, uh, when he's trapped and uh, Pierce, not Pierce, um, guy Pierce kills the botanist woman. 
in the normal movie, she just dies. But in the in this version, she actually survives and, you know, a plant blows her up instead. But it, it like she has a conversation with Tony Stark about, like, you need to survive and you need to kill this guy. And it gives where did it, that it, come uh, from Iron Man three. I know, but where did that extra scene come from? It's the del- it's a deleted scene, an extended so you put deleted that scene. Instead, mm-hmm. you put that does instead. She, does she ever come back? Nope, she dies. She but instead of getting shot and dying immediately, she gets shot, crawls she across the show floor. Show up at all ever again in the MCU? Nope, never again. Rebecca Hall? Seems no, like she never shows up again. But the conversation she has with Tony Stark's a little bit better. Um, there's an extended part of Civil War where. Peter Parker's swinging around Germany and you know he's like in he's in the suit and he's like having fun with that I thought that was pretty interesting um the you know they uh this Fury's big week is pretty good Thor's pool scene in uh Ultron I think is really good because it gives you more context for the infinity stones at the beginning you know uh like the spirits are speaking through him and they sort of give context as to what that is uh the one shots are all good they take like I said they take relevant clips from the shows um it makes movies like Captain Marvel far better by comparison. And there's no Shang-Chi, but there is Black Widow. Black Widow is in this. In Captain this Marvel is in it. Captain Marvel. Yeah, because it, it's the way they do it chronologically is they go from the beginning of time to the end of Endgame. So, so the, the first. Oh, no, there's no there's no Eternals. So but the, fir- with the first Avenger. Uh, no, the first thing you see is uh, the fight with the Thor. dark elves from from Thor. And then it goes from there to. uh. Odin talking to Thor and Loki when they're kids, and then it goes to Captain America. So it's like they take clips from the movies and they split them and uh, they split them huh. apart to show them chronologically. Um, which is what my next thing was. It like they show the clips in chronological order, and it's interesting because they don't play them again. They play them once, and then when you are hearing about it like thirty hours later in another movie, you think to yourself, "Oh wow, I guess that did happen." That sounds feels like actual history now. Um, but it's not perfect. Some of the things don't work. You know, some of the montages they use and some of the clips they splice, uh, have music and stuff in them that are kind of cut off and, you know, it's has to do with like intros and, uh, and credit sequences and stuff like that. So it's a little choppy. Um, but my next one is these are more just, uh, like, uh, opinions. Strange could have easily defeated Thanos and it's, it's so stupid to see it now. Uh, cause he had a sling ring the whole time. He could have gotten them off the ship anytime he wanted. Didn't do it. Could have sliced or, off his hand. Could have got them off the planet. Could have rewind time. Could have done it all. Didn't do it all. Well, because he thought that he would still lose some other way. Yeah, but he could have escaped somehow. I thought the point was that they were going there to ambush Thanos. But but I mean, like before, like, okay, they're on the ship, right? Before he looks through time and sees like how they're going to win. He could have, when he's like complaining to Tony Stark, like, can you get us home? Can you turn this around? He could have easily just spun his hand and portaled them home. Didn't do it though. He could have left himself. Yeah. Yeah. Could have, he could have, he could have done it. Um, Probably should have. There is a noticeable drop off after a couple of the movies. Like some of them get better and worse. Like I skipped Black Widow. I didn't even want to deal with that. Um, I don't know how you watch Captain Marvel and not and skip Black Widow. Because Captain Marvel is infinitely to be better honest, than Black it just Widow. Sounds like, this sounds like such a. Her like her Herculean. Oh, how, Herculean. How do you say that? Herculean task. Yeah, Herculean effort to watch all this shit. Like you were saying, it was annoying that after four hours it kicks you off, so you have to wait two hours. I don't know yes, if I would a, last. He uses a VPN. Hours. Yeah, I use a VPN. I know, but I don't I, know. I, I know. I know. It sounds like an effort. Like, I would probably be like, okay, I need the break here. It sounds like an effort. I, I I'm not like paying attention. I'm not like watching my screen the entire time. I'm just I'm I'm watching it in the background. Like it's just playing. It, I mean, if I was gonna do it, I would probably just watch it on disney plus in the background like i don't know but I... that that's what i did i watched in the background but i only have like three more notes um and then i'm done but uh like i said notice will drop off thor okay I, I said this to you kia last night um thor is definitely ruined after uh ultron he, he completely drops off and here's why so i actually thor, disagree with you by the way okay you can disagree but let me get through it so and you then you can give me your opinion so there's Thor one and there's Thor two. He has his original outfit. He's clean shaven. He's got like great. Uh, he's got like okay, great. And hair. I would say Thor two is better than Thor one. Yeah, Thor two is better than Thor one. Thor two, I think, is where he's almost at his best. He's good in Endgame and Infinity War, but I do think that's a fluke. And here's why: after Ultron, where he's you know he's still serious about his culture, 
He's still got the good outfit. He still looks good. He still acts good. So you, so you're, are you saying that he's better in Ultron than in Thor two? No, I'm saying he's like the same in Ultron as in Thor two. Like he's yeah, got the same. I, th- I mean, I think he might be like marginally better. I think he's on par with what he was in Thor two. I think Thor two is really good. But then after he leaves to look for the Infinity Stones in Ult- at the end of Ultron, is when they switch into his like stupidness because they play the the living with Daryl one shot, you know, where he's in Australia during civil war. And now he's got the beard and he's treating Mjolnir like a kid. And he's making all those stupid jokes. He's drawing pictures of Thanos and crayon on the wall. And you said it was directed by Taika Waititi. I think that's where it definitely starts to drop. And then from then on out, absolutely. From then on out with the exclusion of infinity war and Endgame, he's just a complete, but you can't exclude those two movies. Well, I don't exclude it, but I mean, He's still he's still making like stupid weird jokes at times. He's st- he seems a lot more stupid. And yeah, he goes through he all those trials and you know everyone dies and he's like in pain. But he's he's still making the pretty shitty jokes. Like in Endgame, like he, he's like playing Fortnite well, and stuff like that. I think like, he peaks at an Infinity War. I I could agree um, with that. I, I like his I, look in Infinity War. I think he hits rock bottom in Ragnarok, eventually followed by Thor: Love and Thunder. But he's down low. Then the Russos bring him back up in Infinity War, and I think they balance out the like jokes and the seriousness better. Because I like Thor too, but I und- I think maybe he did need a little bit of levity. Um, because otherwise he's very Shakespearean. Yeah. Um, and then Taika just ruins him. But anyway, this yeah. is the last thing I'll say on him. Uh-huh. Um, but the, the last thing I'll say is some of the movies throughout some of the eras of this are spliced. And the two big ones that I can imagine are Fury's Big Week and the Civil War arc. Fury's Big Week, so Iron Man 2, Thor, and Hulk all take place at the same time. And yeah. they show it to you like that. They split all three movies into parts, and they play them at the same time. So you'll see clips from Iron Man 2, and then they'll switch to clips from Hulk. Then they'll switch to clips from Thor. And then they'll switch back and forth, so it's all happening at the same time concurrently. And it's it's interesting. The other time they do that is, like I said, Civil War. They play Black Widow, Civil War, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and Homecoming all at the same time. So you'll see, see like, uh, you'll Doctor see... Strange, it doesn't make sense that he would have gotten started in Civil War. I told you guys that before. He makes more sense in between the two Guardians movies. Well, here's the thing it, it's interesting because Doctor Strange is definitely the most excluded from that series. Because at the very beginning, like, even before Civil War starts, you'll see clips of him as a doctor and he gets into his accident. And then. Like four hours go by and maybe you'll see like a clip or two of him, like trying to find like a a fix for his hands. He goes to Kamartage, he starts learning and then it stops. It drops off at that point. It's like, he's been studying for a few months. You go through black widow, you go through civil war, you go through black Panther. And then you start to see him like starting to be a little bit more advanced in his sorcery. And then they play the rest of uh, So remind me black widow comes after civil war, right? Yeah. So civil war happens. Uh, then what they okay so they play Civil War then they play you Black Panther, and then after Black Panther they play you Black Widow. What about Homecoming? Homecoming takes place after Black Widow. They they'll really? play clip like they played a few clips, but the entirety of it uh, is after Black Widow. Okay. But anyway, uh, that's like Black that's Widow all I wrote sucks. down about it. I think it's a, I think it was a great experience, but I'm not ever doing it again. It took way too long. Um, how about uh, House of the Dragon? Anybody so them? I haven't watched the last couple episodes. Um, the last episode I watched was the first time skip one. And I'm going to be honest, it became like a soap opera. I don't know. I haven't seen it. It really did become like a soap opera. It was like people just being bitchy to each other. Like it's like something you'd watch on like oxygen TV or something <laughs> like and eh, she's bitchy. And, and, and like, I just was like, oh, this isn't, I don't care. And so I haven't watched the two episodes that came out after that. Um, yeah. I also have not been, keeping I just, up with it. maybe I, I, the problem was I was giving it time. I was giving it time. I was giving it time. And then when the time change happened, I was expecting like, okay, now we get the meat of the show. And it was just kind of like, I, I will give it this first season. I will watch the first season. I just don't need, feel like I need to watch it every weekend because I don't. It really hasn't been paying off, like interest wise. I would almost rather just kind of burn through a couple episodes and see where it goes. I'll give it the first season. If it's not good by the end of season one, I think I said last time, it, or maybe just to Emerson, that I really didn't like when Damon fought all the pirate dudes like a superhero. Mm-hmm. You mentioned like, that on here. If I feel like all the the drama is leading up to just some like bullshit 
action sequence. That's not what I'm here for. I, I just want a good story. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to go into the news cause I feel like the rest of things we should talk about, will have like some type of headline to it. Okay. Well, is she Hulk in there somewhere? Yeah. Um, okay. Avatar becomes first movie in history to pass 2.9 billion at the worldwide box office with the re-release. Huh. Um, yeah. So yeah. Oh, so it, it beat Endgame again. It did. Um, 2.79 billion haul. Um, no, no, no. That was that was Endgame. That was Endgame. Okay, so yeah. we're at 2.8 now. They just barely no, beat it out. At the bottom down there is the most. 2.9? Yeah. Well, it said in the title. Yeah, 2.9. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm excited the... for Way of Water, to be quite honest. Just something that's not. And I'm not excited for that first Avengers movie that would be, yeah. be the rival to this. So, you know, um, Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness, Elizabeth Olsen confirmed. She still hasn't met John Krasinski. I thought, I just thought that was yeah. Cause they don't have to actually be there together to film. Do they? they that's, can just... that's so stupid. I don't even know if they figured out he was doing it while she was doing it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> So that whole um, time he just wasn't in the room. Oh, that's weird. Black Adam's post credit scene may have been revealed and it's a potential DCEU. Every fucking headlight, it's a game changer. Yeah. The hierarchy of power is being redesigned. Out of the smoke and shadows, you see a figure wearing a cape fly down. It's Cavill. And he tells Adam it's been a while since someone's made the world this nervous and they should talk. Cavill and Black Adam was a recent development. So if anyone is claiming this was in the works since 2021, they're lying. Keaton is still the new Batman for the DCEU at the end of The Flash. The only change they made was adding Cavill. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Oh my, this, this whole, it's oh like a dumpster fire, just getting worse. Uh, Stranger Things star Caleb McLaughlin would love to play DC comic superhero Static Shock. If you're wondering, he's the black kid. <laughs> so, I mean, that's like, I, you know, I think he would actually be decent at it. Not that I care about Static Shock. Um, this is. I would love to play Static Shock. Honestly, I would want to do something like a superhero or even something. It doesn't matter. I'm really open to being any character. I feel like I can play anybody. Honestly, it oh, really. God. I feel like how I pick my films is really what speaks to me. Also, I'm also developing how he pick he picks his films is what speaks to him. But he's also like just like down for anything. Mm. Also, I'm also developing other projects myself that will be coming out. Not soon, but soon. Yeah, it really doesn't matter, actually. It's just whatever, like, project speaks to me. Oh, like, no. That's really oh, funny. I mean, he's how, to, how to tell the world you're desperate without saying you're desperate. I don't know. I mean, listen, there's probably not many roles for him. That's the truth of it. I like that he's trying to start his own stuff because there's not much there for him. Who's um, that kid in the uh, – who's, who's the black kid in Hey Arnold with that same haircut? It Gerald. looks like that – yeah, he looks like him yeah. in that picture. Uh, Rebel Moon star Charlie Hunnam faces two-year recovery after sustaining injury during shooting. What the fuck? In Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Uh, yeah, what happened there? Um, I finished the film and got injured again. I have totally exposed S1 and S2 that are torn wide open. Are those his vertebrae? Oh, that's a reference to the hip growing and thighs. Ugh. It's going to take two years to heal, and I have a 40% tear on the ligament on the right side. What the hell was he doing? I'm getting to a point where I'm less tolerant of getting injured and more eager to try and figure out ways to avoid that. Okay. Um, it was no one's fault. I was training really hard for some big physical requirements that I had to do, but I had lost a lot of weight and not really been training for a few years during COVID. So then really getting back to an aggressive regime or regimen while not listening to my body. So he just did it working out and he fucked up his back. <laughs> he like destroyed okay. his lower section. T.J. Miller believes Ryan Reynolds hates him, refuses to be a part of Deadpool 3, even though he wasn't asked. I saw this. This is pretty funny. As, as the character, he was, like, horrifically mean to me. But to me, as if I'm Weasel, he was like, you know what's great about you, Weasel? You're not the star, but you do just enough exposition that it's funny, and then we can leave and get back to the real movie. Uh, okay, I mean, that's, yeah, that was kind of his role, wasn't it? To like Basically. Things. That's exactly why he said that. Because I'm not funnier than he is at all, right? And I haven't been in more movies than him. 
Well, that's over now, isn't it? Saying he thinks it's weird that he hates me, Miller insisted that he won't work with Ryan Reynolds again. Despite the fact, as we're aware, he was never asked to return. The actor added that his former co-star is an insecure dude and noted that I think after he got super, super famous from the first Deadpool, then things kind of changed. I think he was like, see, you guys, see? Um, Reynolds was already a household name. Um, I don't really think you should do something for more than five years. I think it's weird to just go back and play Weasel 10 years later. Was that 10 years? No, it's not 10 years. I don't wish them any ill will. I think Reynolds would make a Deadpool 3 and continue to make movies. I should make Deadpool 3. I just so, think he doesn't like me, and I thought it was weird how he expressed that. So just so we're clear, TJ Miller has had some really, really bad moments in the last few years like i forgot what he did but he got he, he's been accused of like sexual harassment or like sexual assault or something he uh he did like a bomb threat on a subway <laughs> yeah like okay. he the classic yeah, yeah. subway bomb threat we've got, all been he, uh, there guys there have been a lot of uh like reports like on silicon valley that he's just insufferable to work with like one of his co-stars tweeted out that he was like uh like he was a prick or something like that and he got kicked off the show because he was of all this shit so I imagine that there's something to do with him and not necessarily Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Wonder Woman 3 director Patty Jenkins shares big update on the threequel and the <laughs> franchise's future. Okay. Um, wow. Suggesting Warner Brothers is already pushing for more movies. She promises it won't be as bad as the last one. Wonder um, Woman 2001. Wonder Woman tries and fails to stop 9-11. Um, I just wrote Wonder Woman in Benghazi. The final scene. I wrote the final scene for Wonder Woman three, and I thought it'd be interesting to see what happens next. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what it though? Like that's so. They have funny. asked us to think of ways to do more, and it accidentally happens. But you never know. I have a lot of other films I'm excited to do as well. That's so funny. I just finished writing my third movie, and it'd be cool if we do what would happen next. I, like, I, I mean, this guy David Zaslav seems to be like very practical. I don't know how he can look at that second movie and be like. This is our hot ticket. Like, just keep doing it. Like, give it to someone else. I bet they just believe... keep looking at the first one. I know the first one worked. Let's forget about the second one. Pretend how, it didn't how happen. How can they even give her a third one? Like, it was so bad. It was supposed to be that big Christmas Day release. Remember? And yeah. All anyone was talking about is how bad it was. Well, and it was like also it was own. supposed to release on July fourth, so there was a fireworks scene. Yeah. That... And like everyone was like, yeah. "What the fuck is going on?" Like. Pennyworth co-creator explains the show's origins of Batman's Butler subtitle. Oh my God! What? Um, I didn't. I f- I forgot this show existed. It's on HBO. Yeah, when I booted up HBO last night looking for three hundred twenty nineteen, this was on the front page, and the tagline for it was "The Origin of Batman's Butler." That's literally what they use. Yeah. Um, Pennyworth would move to HBO Max for its third season. It received a new subtitle: "The Origins of Batman's Butler." <laughs> Um, now there's an explanation. HBO Max did their research and they discovered a fair few people who had watched and enjoyed the first few seasons of Pennyworth but had not realized it was about Batman. They just thought it was about a bloke who left the army. It's almost like telling a story is better than being like, it's sort of passively related to Batman. That's why you should watch it. I mean, people not knowing Pennyworth was connected to Batman was a bit of an error in terms of conceptualization. Should have thrown in a lot more Easter eggs. No, I don't think so. I think those are the wrong lessons. It became clear that it was just a sensible, matter-of-fact thing to do. We came up with a thousand versions of that. The journey of Batman's mentor, the life of Batman's guardian. (laughs) Oh, my God. Dude, they're idiots. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, this is bad. Do you guys remember when we went to go see uh, the Teen Titans Go movie? And they were making all those jokes about, like, coming soon, the Batmobile, the movie. And yeah, like it's like that's basically what this is starting to become. I mean, if Batman's not a part of it, why does Batman have to be the focus? Like, if you're just going to tell a story about a butler, like it's a cool show about a guy who used to be in the army and now he's a butler. And that's kind of weird. But like, I'm assuming something interesting happens like that. That's the concept. Right. So people are watching it. The story about the guy named Pennyworth. And it's like, let's throw in a million Easter eggs. And then inevitably, like, there's going to be some version of the Joker. There's going to be, like, Riddler's dad. Is going to Somehow be like... Batman, there's going to be another Batman who, like, inspires him yeah. to help Bruce. Like, Oh, God. It, it is like, haven't you already seen, like, 12 other shows that tried this and died? 
Don't you see that? Yeah. Does, didn't Gotham exist for and die for a reason? Gotham was horrible, but it had a few good actors and like some weird people that just kept watching it for some reason. But it wasn't a hit. Bruce Wayne was like an entitled rich prick. I mean, I would literally watch anything Batman related and they they like made me turn it off. Like that's how bad it was. That's how bad it, they all are. Yeah. All right. Uh Daredevil. Anyone watch She Hulk? No. No, but I know what happens. No. I um, I like She Hulk. It's actually the best Disney Plus show. Um and I I don't know, maybe Andor's better. I haven't really kept up with it, but um it's not a bad show. So he, I think his costume is terrible. It looks horrific. Mm-hmm. I can't believe they didn't redesign the shitty costume that he had. Like this, this red one itself is just so bad. Um, well, how, how would you change it if you had the ability to? I mean, I would stop making it look all pouchy and like zippery and it, make it's it a just, little bit more streamlined, maybe. Yeah, it just looks dumb. Like it looks like he, it's like not finished. Like it's the armor underneath what should have been the costume or something. Um, I, it doesn't have to be a skin tight red outfit, but like the, the color of the red is off. It should be like brighter red. So he looks mm-hmm. more like the devil. Although when you really think about it, like the whole devil thing is also weird. She actually makes fun of it. She's like, yeah, sorry. I, I imagine the guy dressed up as the devil was the bad guy. Cause she like thinks he's a bad guy. Um, but like, like these little pouches here, why is this out there? I don't know. It also, what happened to Melvin Potter who made the first one? And now get arrested? this, this other guy. An so now this other guy, Luke, who's like an artist designer, decides that he's going to recreate the exact same outfit. That doesn't make sense. Except he just makes it like mustard yellow. And she makes fun of him too. She's like, you look like ketchup and mustard. Um, they have sex. Um, that seems to be like the takeaway from the episode. I, for me, the Sokovia Accords are repealed. Um, mm-hmm. Well, okay. I don't really care about them banging. I care more about how do they contend against one another in court. I mean, that's like a two-minute scene. Really? He does well. He he beats her. Um, but Frogman is kind of an idiot who is who uh, Jennifer was defending. Um, I like this show, and I really like. I'm the- shocked that someone named Frogman was not. <laughs> no, he's he's a moron, and like it's fun. I like it. I will say though, they make you think that the whole episode is going to be about him, and the ending is actually pretty good. Um, okay. The ending of that episode, it's kind of a cliffhanger, and, and I think the next episode is the last one. Um, do you guys want me to tell you what happens? Sure. So she is able to control herself. She doesn't go like Hulk and Banner. She's like always Jennifer. Yeah. But she, they like they like slut shame her intelligentsia like slut shames her at her award ceremony. And they post like uh, footage of her having sex with that one guy who stole her blood. And like basically she realizes that she's been duped and like taken advantage of and is now being publicly shamed. And like she loses her shit and goes full Hulk mode. And like everyone's running away. And it it basically ends on the cliffhanger of her like regaining her consciousness and being like, oh shit, what have I done? Um, I liked it. I liked that she went like full monster. It, It feels like the show actually was acting like it didn't have stakes and then does have stakes. So we'll see how they follow it up. Um, oh, all right. Werewolf by Night. Did anybody see it? No. Nope. Check out the terrifying comic accurate designs for Jack Russell and Man Thing. I didn't even um, know this was a Marvel thing. Or Didn't you see it on Disney Plus? I, I, you guys were talking about it last night and I had no idea what it was. It's only an hour. Um, actually, it's probably less than an hour because it's like 10 minutes of credits. So it's probably like 40 minutes really. Um, I liked it. I don't, I don't know what he's supposed to look like. Um, but I thought that his, his sweater hair was not great. Um, I don't mind his face, but he looks like he's wearing a, a, a wool sweater. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I just don't think it, it, there's an episode of everybody loves Raymond where he's in the sauna. Robert's in the sauna. And with a bunch of old guys and they're roasting Robert and they're like, Hey Robert, you can take your sweater off. And <laughs> Robert doesn't look like that, but that's what it reminds me of when I see this. I mean, it doesn't look like a natural body. Let's just put it that way. It looks like a, like a 1950s monkey suit, like those old fashioned ones. 
Yeah, and I think that's what they were going for. They also did something weird. I don't know if you guys remember when you go to the theater, sometimes like in the top right screen, there's like a, a little circle that flashes every once in a while. Yeah. Um, I assume that has something to do with the film. I don't know how this was filmed, but it seems like they went in and they added that to make it, to give you that, to make it seem like it's a film, like an old school type film or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked it. Mm. I'm also okay. not, it's not like something crazy to write home about. Um, I thought they were going to show us like what they look like in the comics. So his name is Jack Russell. Let's see. And you know, this guy, Gabriel, Gail Garcia Bernal is a, is a really good actor. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as comic accuracy, I don't know. Like, you know, when it, uh, I think I've said it to you guys before, when it comes to werewolves, I think the best version of a werewolf I've ever seen was in Van Helsing. Lupus Remus? Remus? Remus Lupin? Or what, what is his name? Something like that. I, I actually haven't seen Van Helsing. With Hugh Jackman, right? Yeah. The the best version of the werewolf I think I've ever seen is in there. This was an okay version. I just thought it was fun. Like I wouldn't write home about it. Um, all right. Suicide Squad director David Ayer confirms that he screened his Ayer cut for a fan. This is so stupid, dude. It just what does the fuck? exist? No BS. Two hours and twenty three minutes of incredible, a totally different story. Forget that theatrical. This movie has a deeper message. The fan wrote before adding that Jared Leto's take on the Joker stole the show. Ben Affleck's Batman is said to have a more substantial role, so it sounds like the cut isn't fully complete. Wow. <laughs> so sick of this bullshit yeah so am i who cares um they've already shot avatar Four's first act and planned out the rest so that's interesting we um who's the guy that's in avatar what's his 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 name it's not sam worthington is it yeah it is sam worthington i think Um, okay he hasn't really been in anything in the last like five six years right he's been shooting this he was in hacksaw ridge Uh uh-huh he was in like a movie about spies. I forget what it was called with Helen Mirren and Jessica Chastain. I I really like him. Like uh, I like I him even, too. I have his head sculpt out there on one of my figure on one of my figures. Did I give that to you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I have him on my Titanfall figure. Yeah, I mean he's been doing this. He's. He, I mean, um, he doesn't. He don't take many roles, and it's like the biggest, uh, highest grossing movie of all time. So Jack Russell attends, this is Werewolf by Night. Jack Russell attends a gathering of monster hunters who have come together to lay claim to Ulysses Bloodstone's family relic as it grants the wielder the power of long-lasting life and the chance to rule this cabal. To win that, the hunter must track down a creature within a maze and kill it, taking the bloodstone from the enraged beast. Elsa Bloodstone is among those looking, like I didn't understand how he got the bloodstone, but Elsa Bloodstone is among those looking to lay claim to a powerful artifact uh, she's not as twisted as her father. As for Jack, he's no monster hunter and is secretly there to help that beast, the man thing, escape as he and Ted are old friends who have been traveling together for some time now. Jack and Elsa eventually agree to team up. A lot of the gory kills follow. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Monsters now exist in the MCU and it feels like big changes are coming for this shared world. Also, Bloodstone is likely going to become a major player as the right wielder of the bloodstone while werewolf by night and man things bond might just be leading them to forming their own legion of monsters maybe they should join the thunderbolts since that's where all the <laughs> things that have no ideas go i remember elsa bloodstone was in uh what's it called uh ultimate alliance three but i don't really know much about her uh, yeah i don't she's know like a, she's like a she's like the mystic monster hunter type thing um black adam henry cavill is appearing in black adam in the post credit scene Henry Cavill has returned to Superman and Black Adam because The Rock demanded it. He went hard, full court press on Warner Brothers, and made them go to Henry Cavill, and they had to sign a new deal with Henry Cavill, including saying they were going to develop a new Superman movie. It was all because The Rock insisted. Okay. How many I times mean, are they going to say Henry Cavill? We'll see it. Sentence? We'll see it when it. I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it. I could like, be interested in Black <laughs> Adam versus Superman. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess comics. Uh, have a new costume for Captain America and the Winter Soldier. 
His arm looks um, like a T one thousand. Um. Yeah. I. I don't know. He's wearing like a cloak and shit. I. I don't know. Why is this even an article? All right. Super Mario Brothers animated movie trailer debuts yeah. Chris Pratt's Mario voice. You mean just Chris Pratt's normal voice? We don't get to hear the latter, but Pratt appears to be have toned down the accent for something a little more Brooklyn. Uh, I mean, I did feel like he was doing a voice, but it, it definitely wasn't like Mario. Um, I, I, it seems very phoned in for the most part. It, the movie itself didn't look that bad. Not that I no, care it, about I mean, Mario, but... And not that I care about Illumination Animation, but... Why don't you care about that? Because they have a history, because you know they made the minions. Uh, they like I said, they did Teen Titans Go. They did all the other shit. It, it, they have sort of like not lazy, but it's a little bit lackluster in their animation process. I like Teen Titans Go to the movies. I mean, so, minions I'm, and Gru and all that shit are huge. Movies. Oh yeah, no, I know they're huge, but that's sort of the problem. Is that it's a little too big to fail. It's well, not my favorite animation studio, is what I'm saying. But okay. I mean, I don't like. I'm not too hung up. I mean, it didn't look bad in the trailer. I will say though, uh, Jack Black doing his best as Bowser didn't sound that bad. That wasn't bad either. Like I could see myself watching this, um, for free on streaming, like yeah. in the background, like putting it on. The Flash star Ezra Miller returns to set shoot, returns to set to shoot pickups. Movie now said to be picture locked. Okay, can I just make a comment? What is picture locked? Uh, which basically means that the post-production process is almost complete with only sound mixing or VFX shots to be added. Okay. I mean, can you, yeah. uh, can you imagine for a moment going back on set and having to work with him after hearing all the shit that he's pulled in the last few months? Hey, that's called acting baby. <laughs> but standing behind a camera, like 10 feet away from this dude who like has guns on him at all times. And is like nuts. So the question is like, how does it end? Does he, is he still going to be the flash? They might see how the response is, honestly. They're really like going really to keep it. him on after his breakdown? I don't know. I have to see it just for the sideshow factor. Like, I just want to see what the hell came of this movie. This is going to be my ultimate proof, because if, if the movie ends and they keep him as The Flash, then Warner Brothers is going to really be on my shit list, because they, they fired yeah, Johnny This Depp is where you draw nothing. the line. Not Harvey Weinstein, yeah. <laughs> not yeah. Epstein. This is where we draw no, the line. Like, I get I'm, what you mean. I'm 90% seeing it for Keaton, 10% for the sideshow. Um, but moving forward, like I don't really want to see Ezra Miller as The Flash. Well, like Yeah, like, like they fired Johnny Depp for literally nothing, and then they're not going to fire him for like kidnapping people and like committing crimes across the U.S. Um, let's see what the showrunner for Daredevil said. It's a lighter take, and I'm absolutely here for it. Just like in the comics, there are many ways to explore the character, and as long as Charlie's in the suit, I'll be watching. I hate the way people talk now. I'm here for it. Why don't? Why can't you just say I like it? <laughs> They're um, idiots. New Black Adam TV spot released. I, have you guys seen this? No, no. There have been so many Black Adam things. Like I just don't. I care. was. I based on the picture. I thought maybe like Superman is shown. Um, I, I've sort of dropped off on him after we saw the reveal of the Hot Toys figures. Black um, Adam. Yeah, I haven't really seen much about him. Yeah, no, I have no interest in it. I I will wait for a Black Adam Superman movie and see if there's anything interesting there. Just the fact that he's not that black in the like the suit is gray. I'm kind of yeah. like I like black and gold, and you made him gray. <laughs> I don't like it. And it's it's too over designed too. Yeah, I'm like I'm not gonna pay three hundred dollars for that. <laughs> I just don't want to. Um, she Hulk attorney at law reveals what the deal is with the Sokovia Accords post Avengers. Um, uh, may I remind you that the Sokovia Accords have been repealed? Matt Murdock says. It's a bit of an odd way to remove such a big thing from the universe. <laughs> it's kind of fun. This article is fucking bullshit. Like it doesn't even tell you anything. The 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 biggest point is like what he says in the show. I know it's just a lie. It's pretending like it's telling you something. Yeah, it's not telling you anything. This is, Fuck it. No, it's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. Fuck it. I don't care. I you know this sentence. We're guessing this will be the last we hear of the Sokovia Accords as the NCU has moved on from them and the blip pretty quickly. Why would you move on from the blip? Why couldn't you tell? They whole don't bunch of care, cool dude. They do not care. Like, how could you not go? Whoa, the blip would be actually a great time. 
Like we're all constantly juggling why like other superheroes aren't showing up to save the day. The blip is the perfect excuse. Set your story during the blip. Your hero is there. They're, they're having all kinds of issues. Thor's not coming down to save them. Like everyone's just fucking gone. Why don't you use that? All right. Uh, Thor 11 Thunder star Christian Bale reflects on the monotony of green screen acting in Marvel movies. Mm. That's the first time I've done that. I mean, the definition of it is monotony. You've got good people. You've got other actors who are far more experienced at it than me. Can you differentiate one day from the next? No, absolutely not. You have no idea what to do. I couldn't even differentiate one state stage from the next. They kept saying you're on stage three. Well, it's like, which one is, th- is that? The blue one. I'm like, yeah, but you're on stage seven. Which one is that? The blue one. I was like, where? Um, method acting that would have been a painful pitiful attempt to do that as I'm trying to get help from getting the fangs in and out and explaining I've broken a nail or I'm tripping over the tunic people are comparing this to what Ian McKellen did like when he cried Mm -hmm. that's not what this is Ian McKellen while wishing to interact with actors was actually performing in a story what he's saying is that the shit that he was doing was the same thing every day. There was no, there was no set. There was really no people. And his character is also just like worthless doing nothing every day. Just being like, Ooh, like every, every scene, he doesn't kill anybody. There's not yeah. like, Oh, this is the scene where you kill someone. It's like, no, I'm just like being like, I need the thing from the thing. So give it to me. Like that's every scene for him. He doesn't know what he's doing. That's what he's talking about is that there was literally no substance on top of the, like just everything is the same. Um, mm. So yeah, I, just, I wanted to point that out because I keep hearing people like, Oh, Ian McKellen said the same things. Like, no, Ian McKellen wanted to interact with the actors, but Ian McKellen knew what he was in the Shire versus when he was like in the mountain or something. Mm-hmm. This is not that. Um, Daredevil, Isaac Gonzalez re- responds to negativity she's received since Electra Rumor did the rounds. Um, I feel like I'm just going to get it out of the way. One, I'm confused as for the amount of hate over this. And two, I feel like it saves people energy. No, I'm not cast as Electra and Daredevil. I have already an ongoing series exclusively contract to three body problem. I don't know. That's a show, I think. I'd appreciate if I could live free of negative, ill-intended messages about me playing slash stealing a role that I don't even know about. Thank you. (laughs) Wishing you all the best. Stealing a role? That's kind of a shitty thing to say. Well, from uh, Elodie Young. Yeah, but... I'd like to see Elodie Young back. Yeah, but the type of person who goes on social media to yell at a new actor, like, you stole the role. It's like, it's not them. Like, do you guys remember when Endgame came out and people were bullying the the little kid that played Tony Stark's daughter because apparently she was stealing the role? Like, from like a. Because they thought she was going to be Riri Williams. Minority. Yeah. They thought she was going to be. Oh, yeah. They was from a minority. I was just joking. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um, it's five team ups now that they can make Daredevil and Captain America. I don't think so. I don't think they can make that. Yeah, White nope. Tiger. Don't uh, care. Nope, don't care. Yeah, I don't care. The Punisher. The Again. Punisher is not a team up. The Black Widow. No. That's not a team up. I mean, she does have sex with him. I, I don't think it's Yelena, but she does have sex with him in the comics. Black Widow has sex with Tony Stark too. We don't get to see that. I mean, she basically has sex with whoever's writing her. Or like whoever's like writing the story that she shows up in. Uh, Spider Man, we've heard that before. And we've all right. You know, we've biggest news it. is probably the new Wakanda uh, Forever trailer. What did you guys think? Have you seen it? Yeah, I liked it. I know you were talking to me about how you thought that the legs looked bad. I I don't think legs? I'm like eh, it looks oh, fine. That, yeah. Well, how about the fact that they're giving his Civil War outfit, the one that Coogler changed for the inferior style. I think. And now, like, this is the one they're remembering him by and not the one from the last movie. Yeah, because they know. Also, the the nanotech he can't really make into a suit, I guess, and, like, carry the helmet around. <laughs> I guess, yeah, they can't. Um, here's so- some <laughs> Aztec paintings that Namor is doing. I think that's cool. Uh, yeah, I don't, like, I don't hate the trailer. I just don't think it's that good. Um, Showing Chadwick Boseman. I love this shot. They're giving him the Tony Stark treatment. This shot is cool. I like it. Love the um, Megalodon throne. So it is like a, a Viper. Um, I'm just trying not to play the whole thing. Uh, 
Uh, we've seen this stuff about the attack. Uh, what was what was this area called? In Baku's land? I don't know. Uh, but So what he calls uh, Namor, Kulkul Khan. Kul Khan, is another name for Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, and what was that? Quetzalcoatl that was the is the Cobra. serpent that devours the world. Yeah. Um, okay. Flying shoes. No, those are the wings okay. on his ankle. That looks stupid there. <laughs> okay. I acknowledge that. It looks that. stupid. It, that it... looks stupid, but when he's like jumping side to side, it looks fine, I think. Does he not use a trident? He has a spear right now. I don't know, but I no, this isn't good. This is not good. I he's the thing I'm most excited for. I don't think this is good. Um all right, so there are you know this more of this intro stuff. Shuri, the Queen, Riri Williams, like is a little close to them for some reason. Um biting scenes, November eleventh, talking to the Queen. Being weird. <laughs> um, more spears through cars. Didn't you do that in the last one too? This the, all that shit looks terrible, if you ask me. Like this is the most boring stuff in the trailer. Yeah, I agree. City streets. I guess that I'm assuming that's Riri Williams. Mm -hmm. um, Wakanda is being attacked. I hope they. I hope it gets flooded. That'll it's be really being, cool. It, yeah, I mean, it looks like it. Okay, this is the part that you're saying looks good. I think it looks fine. I think it looks. I think it looks fine. Like how he's jumping on air, okay, like side to side. He has ankle. He has wings on his ankles. Okay, but let me ask you a question. If the wings on his ankles weren't there and like it's just meant to be like he has some sort of technology that lets him do that, would you care? No, not about the way he's moving, but it's the wings on the ankles that I Yeah, I'm helping. talking about the way he's moving, bro. I'm this, not I don't like Riri Williams doing this stuff. Like I think it's such a weird character to try to throw into this whole thing. Yeah. Um at least it doesn't Oh, yeah, I thought I was about to say it doesn't seem like they're making her like Iron Man, but like this is exactly that. Um, she's flying. Wow, it's almost like a scene for scene. Is this in Baku jumping? It looks like it. He's got the the staff thing he is that uses. In Baku? Can't tell. He's got the he's got the arm thingy he was wearing, and he's got the staff that he uses. So it seems like cool. it. We've seen this before. Um, is that in Baku? No, no, it's just guys. Atuma. All right, this is like the. I mean, I think it's a cool shot. What do you think? I like the outfit. I just don't like Shuri. Yeah, I I, I like the outfit. I think it kind of yeah it definitely gives away that it's Shuri though. Yeah, I mean I don't know. Is this supposed to be a secret at this point? I There's mean, no for the way. average person, 100%. Yeah. So I didn't think that the trailer was that good. I I did not mind it in the slightest. I mean, I, I guess I'm sort of on the fence. It's not awful, but it's not amazing. I, I think that, like, yeah, I agree the fucking... Listen, the still the where he's... Better. The still where he's hovering with the ankles, like, I'll give you that, okay? However... I, I'm not. I'm not that judge bent a lot. And I'm like, eh, hey, whatever. Like, we'll see what happens. We'll see how it looks. I mean, we saw how it looks. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll see how it looks in the film. Okay. I, if I get a figure from that, I want him in the full ceremonial dress, and like the blank, the cloak will block the the, the wings. Wings. You're not gonna cut them off. Well, I'm hoping that they are detachable. Like, they come well, out. I hope that they like come out. Yeah. <laughs> That's also weird if you think that they like hang by his like the bottom of his feet as he, he can't wear shoes like boots yeah. or no. Well, I guess he doesn't need to. Um. All right. Do you have a smart ass game, member? I, I do, my okay. man. All right. Uh, Emerson, why don't you start us off this week? Thing. Thing. All right. Here we go. This thing first appeared in the year two thousand and twenty-two. It is a few feet in both diameter and height. Uh, in the world this thing originates in, over 300 of them exist. They can be used to restock supplies. 
They can be traveled to with ease after you discover them. Sites of Greece? Yeah, correct. <laughs> okay. I, I really fucked myself there because you said over 300 of these exist and you said there were a few feet in length and I was like, are they Spartans? I And so I started like chuckling to myself and then I didn't, I missed everything. Interesting. No. Um, all right, can you pick the next one? Um, Place. Place. All right. This location has a diameter of 12,240 kilometers. It has been featured across all mediums of entertainment. Film, television, comics, and books. How many miles is that? <laughs> I, I uh, had no to, concept. You, you, you want me to? Do you want me to translate it? For uh, you? How many miles? Like I don't know. Do you know everything? Twelve hundred kilometers. Like I'm what? guessing it's gonna be like to about miles. A miles. Uh, hold on. Kilometers to miles. What it's it's twelve thousand. Uh, that's. Uh, that's 7,600 miles. 7,000 okay. miles in diameter? Uh, that's what it came up as. Okay. <laughs> Everett seems Everett seems <laughs> confused that that doesn't... I mean, I, I, I just... Okay, anyway, move on. Just, just, it's, it's large. Okay. Okay. Uh, contains multiple large levels that descend deep underground. This location was featured heavily in a sci-fi film from the year 1999. It has been the subject of attack multiple times. It exists in the system of the core worlds. It serves as the galactic capital for many generations. Coruscant? Correct. Nice job. Okay. All right. Coruscant uh, is underground? It has underground levels and areas. This is what I said. Oh. Never seen um, them. Do we ever see those underground levels? Yeah, in the games yeah. a lot. In the show and in the games, you do. Also in the movies, you see them like moving around. You know, like to the lower areas, like you know where the diner is, and you see people moving around. But isn't that like, still above ground? Around. No, the above ground is like where all the sky cars are flying around. But then like there's like tunnels what? and stuff. <laughs> Whatever. He's gonna fuck himself here. No, not, no, no. Is, that's that's it is above ended. ground though. It is yeah, above, it's ground. above ground. Are you considering that to be underground? No. What, there's, there's a sky. There's light. Yes, I know there's light. But there are actual really large underground areas, of course. I know there are, but the example you're Have using is them? not a good one. Yes. Okay, if you want to exclude the, the stuff from the movies, not then... underground. If you want to exclude the stuff from the movies, then it's in the Clone Wars television show and... A couple of the books. I comics. just was like, "Why is he saying this? The scene is in okay. daylight, bro. What are in you doing?" In other words, I would have never known that that, that uh, you wouldn't have got one hint. I mean, I I don't know. Like, I was just thinking underground. I've never seen chorus like to be chorus on is like a sky city that cars fly around and shit. Okay, well, let's move on. <laughs> Person, here we go. This person's first appearance was in the year two thousand eight. They are shorter than the average human, perhaps about four and a half feet tall. They speak minimal English, but can understand it well. They are the protagonist of the film they appear in. They have a particular skill for construction and trash collection. Wally. Wally. Uh, Emerson got it first. Oh, fuck. Uh, I've never even seen that, but I. I love Wally. It. Uh, Ali. Wally's a good movie. Um, do you want the extra question? Yeah, give it to me. All right. Your extra question regarding Wally is what is the name of the company that designed and built Wally in the movie? Amazon. By and large? Correct. Nice job. Nice. So that's three points for Emerson fuck. and one for Kia. Well, why did you pick a Wally question? Where the fuck did that come from? It's it's a Wally. Well, it's a it's a bit of a change from like you know like the MCU and DCU stuff that we you know. Yeah, but it's supposed to so. be stuff that we would know. Have you I not seen? Know. You've never seen Wally before? No. <laughs> well, wow. supposed, it's a Disney movie. How am I supposed? I thought Jade loved Disney movies. Jade might have seen it. I don't know. <laughs> Two thousand eight. I was seventeen. Okay. I mean, I I didn't I didn't know, I didn't know I Jade at the time. I didn't know that you are not a fan of Disney movies. Okay. So anyway, uh, <laughs> this that's the conclusion that you draw. 
I, I love know. this podcast, uh, bro. I love well, this well, okay, podcast. I I made I made the I made the assumption because you know we we've reviewed the Lion King, we've reviewed Toy Story, and a lot of other Pixar. Did we movies review Wall-E? Like well, no, but it's in the same vein of all the other movies we've seen. So all I right. would I I assumed I whatever. I understand your logic. I'm just saying. But also, what, you you no, got see, the answer right. That was fucked when you asked the what's the company name? Which the fact that I knew that is clearly like I clearly have more experience with Wally. Like I would have okay. never. I guessed Wally. I just yeah. guessed it. Yeah, with and you mic. got it right. Like a second, had Emerson been like a second late, you would have gotten that okay, right. Okay, that was luck. Also, the second question was something that only. Emerson would know because you know I haven't watched those shows. I I, obvi- I don't know that you haven't seen. By Wally. and large, no, you know that I haven't watched uh, Clone Wars and like comics and games where I would have gone to underground Coruscant. I don't know. What... Okay, now in Everett's defense, actually, I think I'm supporting Kia here. I was like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. But when he said it's in the core worlds, I knew it was Star Wars. And then he said it's the capital, so I was like, okay, I guess it's Coruscant. You also have to sort of operate on some level of disbelief or assumption. Like, oh, I, I disbelieve the consider people. like a city like New York or Chicago. You, there's underground areas, right? Like there's subway yeah, but tunnels. But when you're there's... underground, you don't see the light. That's my fucking. I've issue. never yeah. seen Coruscant like being described as underground core society. Now I have seen it in the games and so the shows. I just think that him choosing the diner was yeah, a really that, that's, poor, poor idea. I that's less of an underground area. It's more on ground level. That's my bad for saying that. But it's not more. It's no, pretty it's much, not on ground level. Yeah. It's it's just it's open. It it, it's it is not. It's not surface. in the sky. It is on the solid ground. You can no, go it's look on a tower. No, it isn't. Okay, I'm gonna fucking pull. I, I think it's like yeah. I think it's, it's like just one of the many tower places that you can go to. It is on ground level Coruscant. I'm I'm ninety percent sure. Okay, let's find out. Well, like, then, would yeah, you make like, a distinction between like things up high and things on the ground? Like, we don't say it's in skyscraper New York rather than like city okay. New York. Just to get this out of the way, Emerson has sixty four points. You have sixty two points, but uh, my my this hints week was are bullshit. That's this is saying. not ground level. Bullshit. You, What's you, no, how do I fucking share yeah. this thing? I'm access. looking at it. How do I do this? Um, do I have a way that I can share stuff? Yeah, I, I gave you permission. Okay. Just bring up the bar. It says share. Right? Everett knows how. Oh, share mm-hmm. screen. Okay. The fuck? It, desktop one? Is that what I fucking do? This is weird. What, what screen are you looking at? I I mean, I what I want to share is I want to share this, but it's like acting like it doesn't see it. Mine just says screen. I don't know because I'm on a Mac, so I don't know. But okay, the point is Maybe, I'm looking at it something? right. I yeah, see I'll it. Give you the it's, link. it's it's a, it's in a place called Coco Town. Look, my um here. Okay. That's not like street level Coruscant. There's like no. roads and shit. Okay, look, look at um, look at fifty three. You can clearly see that it's going down. It's in the sky at fifty three, fifty three seconds. All right. Okay. Yeah, Does that's not that's not look, like street level Coruscant. No, no, they're 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 up in the sky. I mean, yeah, you can see the area overlooking is actually lower. Like if you look at. Over at there, fifty three. Yeah, if you look over in the corner, you can see that there's like, they're up in the sky. So it just seems like a normal city, except they also have like sky traffic. I, w- I wouldn't differentiate between like upper, down, and underground. I mean, how am I supposed to know underground exists? Okay, I'll I'll concede the fact that this seems like it's up in the air. But if anything, that makes my that kind of adds to my argument that there's something below this place. Yeah, I agree. I just think, listen, I I agree with you that Coruscant has underground areas. I'm not casting any judgment on whether or not Kia should have known that. However, this is not an underground area, which is what you gave to Kia as an example. I'm just saying, if you only saw the movie, I would have never known that it could be Coruscant. Based on that, it would have completely thrown me off. That it's like known for its core, like underground. No, society no, no. no. I, I said it was in the core systems or the core. It was a. Uh, it was in the core systems, which has been said in the movie. 
Oh, like yep, in terms yeah. of, it's been said in the movie. So, bro. like in terms of where it is in the solar system or like mm, whatever system yeah. you have. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, looking at my hints, if I were to just all. if read I were to all. if I were to take out the underground hint, it would go. So this location is uh twelve about twelve thousand kilometers in diameter. So that means it's big. It's been featured across all mediums, so film, comic, television, and books. Uh, you take out the hint about being lower. Uh, it's featured heavily in a sci-fi film from 1999. It's been attacked multiple times. It exists in the system of the core worlds and then uh, serves as the galactic capital for many generations. And that's where you got it. But if I were to go further, I would have got, all... I, I could have guessed it at that point. Okay. So if you would guess at that point, fine. But if I were to go further, my other hints are also called the Imperial center. It's uh, I can't, it's pronounced. It's an incop, uh, an incopolis. Or, or a city Immun- covered planet. Immunicopolis. Yeah, it's... yeah, an Immunicopolis. A city covered planet. Houses places like the Jedi Temple and the Galactic Senate, and the name begins with C. Okay, but the problem is I think your second or third hint was something like this place descends thousands of miles yeah. into the Well, deep. yeah, the, the hint I took out was contains multiple large levels that descend deep underground. Yeah, when I when you said that, my mind went to like, okay, maybe this is like a mine or yeah, uh, I was like, thinking like the uh, vibranium mine. In Black Panther, but I'm like, no, that can't be right because it's not 1999. And also, how well, is you're, it 12,000 not... miles across or whatever? This is a big ass planet. I understand, but, but the the you're not you're not like the hints are not are supposed to like they're not supposed to give you the answer immediately. They're supposed I to make know, you think. but if the hint misleads you in a weird direction, then then it becomes it's strange. fine. I'm just well, saying. it's not like I told you like it's covered in plants or. You know, like it exists in real life. Like that Okay, but if I was off, describing, but... like, let's say I was describing the moon, right? And I was mm-hmm. like, this object descends several thousand feet into the surface. You'd be like, okay, it's probably something like a building <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, it's the moon! <laughs> like... Yeah, but the, you can't really compare that. Like, our, if you're talking about our moon, our moon has no evidence really of like giant underground tunnels in okay, terms of... But... But the a, way you a said planet it was just covered whatever city, whatever it was. But would you say one of Coruscant's defining characteristics is that it extends deep into the Earth? Okay. It, it that's a difficult answer because if you're asking me, I'd say yes because one of the biggest parts about Coruscant are the lower levels. That's and where see, the, that's I know where, where you're getting live. it from. That's I where the drug cartels work. I know you're getting it from but, the fucking. Yeah, the that's Knights what I'm of saying. If you, if, if you ask me, never played. First of all, Coruscant's not in Knights of the Old Republic. Second of all, if you're <laughs> oh, you're asking, you're, it's the other city. You're, you're asking, it's exactly terrorists. You're thinking of terrorists. You're asking me because I know that, but if you're asking someone like Kia who doesn't know as much, then yeah, that would probably be a bad hint. And I, I'm, I'm so okay, fine. I'll, I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> but I love the, the this whole podcast, the whole bro. point is for not, it's to throw you off sometimes, I guess. Yeah, good Whatever. job. <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay, you're still two points behind. I'm not <laughs> mad about it. I'm just saying, like, I would have never gotten that. Okay. By and large, what's up? Yeah, I'm surprised you're not more mad about Wally. <laughs> I mean, we did talk about it being from things that we've actually watched. I, that, which I didn't know that you hadn't seen. Well, I thought everyone's seen Wally. Wally's like one of the most famous Disney movies. But we have not reviewed it and like ever discussed it really. Okay. I mean, the, okay. I guess I won't do Disney movies that we haven't explicitly no, reviewed now. then. Yeah, you only have like four left. Just do the shit that we watched. And you, there better be a fucking good ass fucking final game, Everett. I you I am, start putting the work in right now. I I have been putting the work in. I've been spending a lot of my time looking for isms because they're really difficult. But I'm I'm trying my best. I'm working on it. To my mind, we have nine left that we want to do. And also, Wakanda Forever that would make it ten. And mm-hmm. Avatar. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's eleven. Because that comes out in December. I think Avatar is going to be our last one. So our, our end of the year roundup will be like our final episode ever. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That puts us on Christmas Day. <laughs> it's currently our Merry track. Christmas. The show's over. Basically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'll be our last one. Um, although Thanksgiving might be tricky. Because I'm not around. We might have to do that one a little later. Okay. Um, and then we could do our end of the year one. 
where we like cap <coughs> off. We'll do that one the following week, and that'll be the last one. Sure. So we'll stick to that schedule. So next week we're gonna do in Watchmen. Are we doing like the extended version? Is that even available? Uh, there's like four different versions of the Watchmen. I'm just gonna watch whichever one's on HBO. Or let me use my Just Watch app to see where I can just watch it. I'm. I don't know if the extended version adds because the, like there's the ultimate version. I know it has the black like the that weird like what is it called? The black freighter, that part. Uh, you know uh, what I mean? No. That's in the extended version. You know, in the in the book, it has like that weird story of the guy that's shipwrecked or something. Did you ever uh, read Watchmen? Yeah, like a long time ago. I'm I not, didn't. A, a ship. I don't remember the shipwreck, but. Yeah, it's the guy that's like on the ship, and then he like washes ashore, and he I don't know, he goes crazy or something. Um, it looks like there's one on HBO. Um, so I guess we'll just watch that one. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, Tales of the Black Freighter. You might have to rewatch it. I might have to rewatch or reread it. Okay. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, I think that is it for this week. I will see you guys next time. See ya. See ya.